Hi everybody, so in video 1734 we built the twin of this and gave it to Luke for his new ventures outside. Now we built it quite high because we ordered more draft on it and people have been saying well that's great but they can only be used outside and that's very true, they can only be used outside. So what do you do with them to make them usable indoors? Well. It's really easy actually to make the adaptations to a rocket stove so that you can put it into a fireplace and use it indoors. The first thing is you can't just stick this in a chimney because because all the fire and all the heat it goes straight up here which is meant to because you're meant to have a pan on there. You don't want that to happen or it'll disappear all up your chimney. Now if you have a look what people are doing with rocket stoves it's actually pretty simple. They essentially put a box around it so that it acts like a battle plate then the gases come up, hit the baffle, go back down and then they're exhausted and that way you don't lose all that heat up the chimney. Now the first thing is this is far too big because we made this 800 so I want it 500. So I've cut the top 300 off and we've got this chimney now of 500 and what we need to do is construct a box that will go around that chimney with an outlet to a flue that we can put up the chimney in the house and to do that I've got some see some be blah 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 some sheet steel. Now I really wish I could have bought another box and I could have done they were selling them at 200 by 200 and 300 by 300 but it was like 400 quid for a length of it or something stupid I forget what so I bought some plate and this is 200 by 500 this is 100 and from here to here is 400 so if I put four of those around there I will get my box and of course I need a top and I need a bottom to it so I need to weld those together. I've got four of these, I need to weld them together and stick it on there. Now I just buy these to size and square because it makes everything so much easier. I get a lot of stuff from metals from uh, for you. I just order it, it comes square into size and all I have to do is butt it up and put a tack weld in. Because I'm going to get this wrong and a tack weld means I can beat it roughly into shape before I actually weld the whole thing together. So I'm just going to tack this together. And that's the box made up. Now it's got a hole in the bottom because that goes on this section here. I've left the back plate off at the moment because we still need to put in a flue connector. Now you see people do all kinds of stuff here eh? using cylinders and tanks and boxes all kinds. It's the same principle as long as the gases are forced by a baffle maybe two baffles to come round and maybe again before they exit then you're going to be fine. It's this uh, chimney exit we will see in a minute that gets connected to your flue in your house but the idea is to create a baffle and force the gases around. You do that two time, uh, one time, two times, three times if you're feeling really crazy. Doesn't matter if it's a square, doesn't matter if it's a tube. The gap here, I tend to leave the gap here the same as the gap here. Yeah. Anyway, let's put that on and weld it in place. Okay, that's it, and now the gases and heat will come up here, be swept into this chamber, there'll be a back plate on it, and that will get welded onto there, and it's that bit that goes into your glue. Now, people say put insulation in here, they bring it down to the floor and they pack the insulation uh, over there, they say it improves efficiency. Ah, it probably does, uh, I just don't think it does that much, and I mean, you don't want to keep the heat in, it's a room heater, you want the heat out, so it, I don't do it, but it is suggested you put insulation in there if you want to and now is when you'd pack the insulation. We're going to drill a hole in this and weld on that back plate. So now I've welded that bit of pipe on there, all I have to do is weld the back on like that. And that's it. Now I've seen arrangements where they actually put a fan on the exhaust but quite often you find, quite often, I have seen really clever arrangements where they put a series of pipes coming out of the exhaust in a zigzag pattern and of course that acts like a radiator drawing all of the heat out of the exhaust before venting it to the outside. I thought that was clever. But this flew on there straight up your house chimney. 
Okay, it's pitch black out here because it's winter, but we can see the fire drawing in the right direction. Not sure how well that's going to come out, but there's the booster air holes doing their job. So there you go. It was a bit of a shame it was dark, but you could see that the flames are going in the right direction, meaning that putting this box on hasn't choked the flue. I mean, it won't work as well now as it did before, because it is lacking a flue. It's meant to go in a chimney, and it's meant to have a flue attached to it to go in a chimney, and that's where you get the correct draw. But even without that, we're still getting flames in the right direction, which is great. There was a little periods there where you could actually hear it rocketing, but... I don't think I caught that on camera, which is a shame. Now, in essence, that is all you do to rocket stoves to turn them into indoor heaters. Obviously, they need a chimney and a fireplace, etc., etc. So, easy enough to do. People do lots of things. I did a box because it was easy for me. You can use anything to make that second chamber. And as I say, people also draw those hot gases out into a, a, a manifold and they use that manifold as heating, which is pretty impressive. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.